Wonderful. Good morning. SF Live episode 223. I'm still in the home office, as you can hear. I'm still like, I still have the sniffles. I have a man cold, head cold, whatever you want to call it. But in 2021, you can't go to the office. So we're doing this from home. Uh, I didn't want to cancel this interview because uh, we chatted only about five, six weeks ago with Michael Starsenich, and he's the president and CEO of Three Valley Copper. And uh, we, we were quite euphoric, actually, coming out of this interview. The stock ran uh, from 25 cents all to hit a high of 60 cents at some point only to come back crashing down to 21 cents. A lot has happened in the last six weeks. We're going to catch up with CEO Mike here uh, in, in, a, in a second, but to, to, to see what happened, like strategic review, financing, debt forbearance, uh, production updates and issues. Like we're trying to pack as much into this conversation as well. And uh, I, I just spoke with Mike offline before we went live here. And I was like, Mike, should I take the hostile approach? Like we were super, super euphoric Coming out of this interview, we're talking about cash flows in 2023, and then you hit us over the head with a strategic review four weeks later. So, um, going to come over, switch over to you in one second, Mike here, and uh, just remind everybody to follow us here on YouTube, follow us on Twitter as well, hit the like and subscribe button, leave a comment, leave a like. Uh, we do want to hear from you. What do you think of the format? What do you think of the conversations? And uh, if you have a question for Mike, if I see it during the interview, I'll definitely throw it in here as well. Now, let me unmute you, Mike, and welcome you to the program. Wonderful. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, Kai. Thank you for the introduction and the opportunity again. And you're right. You're right. It has been, um, admittedly, I look in the rearview mirror and I go, boy, what a six weeks this has been. Uh, so I think you've captured it properly. And I think this is an opportunity to go through that. Um, yeah, it's, you know, it's been a wild uh, roller coaster ride. So I appreciate yeah, you coming uh, back on. And uh, I titled the video under review on, on YouTube. So uh, <laughs> definitely coming back to our investment thesis here and a couple of things we have to check and see if we're still on the right track here as well, of course. So um, trying to figure out where we start. I, I mentioned to you earlier, I think let's let's start chronologically. We spoke on September 16th. You, you mentioned in the interview, like Don Gabriel is not the smoothest operation. There have been issues. W and then you you hit us with a strategic review. I think it was October twentieth. Stock stock uh, trading halt. Take a take us from take it from there and give us an update there. Yeah, no, no and I'll, I'll rewind ever so slightly because you, you touch on Don Gabriel, which is one of our two deposits. Just as a reminder for the audience, our producing uh, deposit is Don Gabriel. It's our open pit. It's it's predominantly our ore source uh, for this year, and, and we'll share uh, and we'll share as being an ore source for next year. Um, and when you have that one primary ore source, uh, everything good in and, and everything bad is amplified because of it. There's, there's nothing else to help out with uh, ups and downs when you go through uh, the mining um, cycle with it. And so we had alerted probably the, the market. I want to say it was, um, I want to say we did the press release in May of, uh, of earlier this year. So, you know, we've, we've, we've run into some, some uh, issues was, is a strong word. Uh, but we'll say we some anomalies on how Don Gabriel was performing based and compared to our, our, our resource model. And so we, we came out pretty upfront on that. And that was a, a dedicated press release because at a quarter one release, we, you know, something was happening and, but we, we weren't in a position to share uh, it. And I said, you know, I'm going to let you know when we have better information. And it was, we knew it would be too long to wait till our Q2 update, probably in August when we released Q2. So we took the opportunity as soon as possible when we had a better understanding to, to share some of that information. And so we were experienced uh, in this phase of mining. And, and to put it in perspective, there's several phases of mining for Don Gabriel. I think there's seven, possibly even eight. Uh, I, I For sure, seven, maybe eight. And this phase of mining has proven to be one that has not perform the way we expected it to. And it happens to be probably at the worst time. Now, I, I, I say that because we've, we've had to revise guidance because of it. We just released quarterly results and said, listen, we're going to probably be at the very low end of our revised guidance. And as we were seeing this unfold in um, the month of September, when the numbers came through into October, uh, because it is a leaching operation, you have some visibility as to you know what you put on the leach pads is going to come out over a period of time. Uh, it doesn't come out the next month. Uh, it doesn't convert to cathodes the next month or the copper cathodes. It it converts to copper cathodes over a period of months. And so we took uh, we looked at that and we said, okay, listen, this has been going on and off sort of since May. Um, now I can I can say that in other phases of mining. 
uh, Don Gabriel, we've had the opposite happen too, where we found or outside of the resource model, or we found better grades, or we've produced, or we've performed better than what the resource model happens. So I think up and down overall, we will get close to what the resource model is predicting. But right now we were in a cycle where it was down. Um, and seeing you know, you know some down performance in August, some down performance in September, we had spoken in September, I get it. Uh, and then this was continuing into October. And we started projecting this out and saying, okay, if, if this continues for November, if it continues for December, if it continues for January, our cash flow is not going to be what we're projecting it to be. And, and we're going to get it into an enormously tight situation. So we started looking at um, options internally as to, you know, how can we stretch this out uh, to get Papa Mono done on time, to get it ramped up, to get into the next phase of mining, because we are moving phases. Currently, we're actually moving into another phase. So that was part of the plan. And, and we believe that phase will uh, perform better than what we're leaving. Um, and, and part of the reason uh, our, our guys at site are saying that, and, and again, this is, this is their perspective and their opinion, is that we're getting closer to the heart of the deposits uh, on this outside phase. We were a little bit further away. So um, you know, don't hold me to it, but that's quick, what I'm working at. Because it's a fairly long answer, but we're going to get to the yeah. strategic review part in a second. But on Gabriel, Don Gabriel, like you are still producing. Yes. Like, how much are you producing right now and what's the current run rate? We're we're pro we're producing uh, we're planning to produce about sixty thousand tons a month. We have another uh, twenty to uh, about twenty thousand tons that we get from outside sources that we process third party ore and and from Anami, which is a government uh, um, uh, entity that we process ore for. So we're looking at about eighty thousand tons of ore a month right now. All right. The, Could continue. I just wanted to put some some parameters contest, around it. Yeah. But, but like, what, what, what's cash flow then like per month? Since you're doing some toll milling as well, like, how can you be cash flow like negative? Is it just really the operations that are eating it up and not the grade hitting the targets? You're right. The grade is is down probably by about twenty percent, twenty five percent under than what we expected, and that's painful when you're running eighty thousand through and you're or sixty thousand of our own. It's that's a big clip. Um, and, and so 80,000 of our, at least our crusher size is about, you know, probably just in around 50% of our capacity, but on the, on the back end, which is the, the cash producing part of it, we're running at about 25% capacity, which is the cathode production. So you can see how the fixed cost on a per unit basis just absolutely, um, punches in the back of the head. Um, this was never in the intention when we set our budgeting for 2021. So we, we, we got caught here on, on lower production, um, from Don Gabriel this year. And, and where I was going with this is there's a collision of things here. And sorry, Kai, I, I can go on with this, yeah. but I think <laughs> it's important. A lot has happened in six to eight weeks. Um, as we understood Don Gabriel was unfolding this way, we also um, looked each other in the eye and said, okay, you know, we're prog progressing very well with Papamono, which is the underground development. This is since we renewed our contract and worked through things with uh, the contractor in, in late August. Uh, both uh, like August, September, October, and into November now have been our four best months of advancement. So it gives us a lot of uh, a lot of confidence that we're going to get to our target here at the very beginning of January uh, and do our first uh, operating cave. So I, I'm very happy about that. And that's always been our goal uh, is to get this construction done so we can continue moving along. But we had the questions of management on site and said, well, you know, Don Gabriel has been a thorn in our side this year. We don't want another thorn uh, with Papa Mono. What can we do to ensure we mitigate this? Uh, whatever we can. I mean, there's always going to be operational risk, but what can we do to mitigate Papa Mono's uh, anticipated production? And through that process, um, there was a request and we agreed and we supported it. And, and that was part of the financing ask that we got to was, we need to bring forward certain sustaining capex uh, forward from later years into 2022. And the reason for this was we can one, increase production and bring it forward from Papa Mono. And two, we can mitigate and provide ourselves alternatives in the event that you know we're building draw points for, for the caving that happened down. We're building more draw points to help mitigate in the event that there's um, there's a, a problem, an issue, a delay in one of them. So we have opportunities to access ore from more places. The combination of Don, uh, visibility of Don Gabriel's production 
and the need for additional sustaining capex financing to bring forward, we didn't have the capital. Um, and the strategic review was started sort of in the midst of all this. Uh, and it was actually the catalyst of, you know, having a bought deal come to us unexpectedly quickly. Um, when, when we announced that strategic review, I had no insight that there was a bot deal, I think coming a week later that, and even, even our advisors and bankers that we were working with were, were surprised. So, um, it, it is a silver lining to ensure the continuity of the project, but it is, um, I, I gotta be politically correct here. I can't use horrible language, but, um, it was heart wrenching, um, for existing shareholders. I get it. Um, I fielded a lot of disappointing and upset existing shareholders and they have every right to be upset. Um, but this last six to eight weeks has moved in a way that I did not expect at the beginning of this six or eight week period. Okay. The strategic review, like what would you have to hold the stock? Like I'm just trying to understand like the whole concept of the strategic review. Cause you were halted for like six, seven days, almost like eight days. I think didn't you come no, back no, no, trading not... on the 28th? Let me just double check the news releases real quick. But you, no, you were halted this, for a little bit. The, well, only uh, during the day. Only during the day. It was a, a period of the day. Oh, it sorry. Yeah, I had halted. my dates yeah. mixed up. It was only on the. It was only the twenty eighth. Sorry, but it's like yeah, the, part the of period, the period. Yeah, yeah, the period of the strategic review. Like you had to halt the stock. Like people were shocked and surprised. It included a lot. Part of it was the financing, like you said, mergers and acquisitions, joint ventures, acquisition or disposition. Do you have to announce it like that, or is were those all options on the table? Like I, I didn't see you guys doing an acquisition at that point. I think when we were chatting, you had two million dollars in the bank. I don't yep. think an acquisition was feasible at the time. But no. uh, was that lawyer speak? Uh, yeah, there is lawyer speak in there too. And and one of the one of the requests of us uh, with the uh, with our advisors is, look, we we have to be um, we can't be biased on what we're necessarily looking at. So just let's let's keep the door open for every opportunity. And so I, I think that's the lawyer speak. It's, it's the, the copy, control C, control V, make sure you capture the kitchen sink, get it out yeah. there. Uh, there's some tweaking around that, uh, specifically on the long-term debt. And, and, and that's, we have made great progress in that. And again, uh, you know, I, I put a, a call out to our, our lenders to say, you know, thank you. And uh, thank you for being partners with us and working through this and, and, and understanding what we're trying to do here and them seeing it, which has been, which has been great. So in that forbearance agreement uh, undertaken is what came out of that. Yeah. If they wouldn't have moved to the side, like they would have said, okay, we're holding still, you wouldn't have been able to do the bot deal either. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, that's correct. So they, they, they understood the importance of it. Um, we had been in discussions with them, you know, pretty quickly after this all moved at an extraordinary pace. I, I did a quick trip out to the UK for a couple of days uh, and for those that are tuning in here in Canada, it's a whole different world. But if you haven't been to the UK, you land there when it comes to COVID. So that was uh, pretty much a, a, an open eye for me. But it was important to sit across the table, eye to eye, face to face, have a conversation, go through things with these guys and, and, and see their commitment to the project. And, and we're working through definitive agreements. That's the intent here is to realign the repayment schedules of our debt uh, with when our cash, uh, our cash inflows are, are strongest. So. I, I'm That's curious, just a question from left side, because I saw it yesterday and it struck me as interesting. Uh, First Majestic issued a convertible debenture at 0.375%. Is that uh, uh, possible, so, like something you're looking to do as well, a convertible or something? Are you being offered something like that? Just a question that just popped in my head, maybe. Yeah, I, I think I, that would be difficult for us to do. Um, I, I wouldn't really support it either. Uh, at this time, uh, one, it would be really hard to do a convertible debenture at the asset level being MTV. And it's, it's the seniors. I can understand they, they're going to be in front of that. And the convert guys will have their issue with that. The uh, uh, doing it at, so sorry to jump in. I think my point I'm sorry, it was, was the extremely low, uh, interest level. Oh, the that, interest that level. was, that was extremely interesting. Like, I know you guys won't get 0.375%, but uh, do you, do you see, sort of like on the interest side, is that some to coming towards you a little bit in your favor? Like when I, you're renegotiating? Uh, n no, we, uh, it'll be a discussion point, but I don't think we're going to win it. Um, I, I'm not, I'm not throwing up the white towel. I'm just being okay. reasonable here yeah. uh, and re realistic. What I do see is a more probable event um, and in something in the opportunity set would be um, as we finish Papamono and execute on 
uh, its production and show that it's caving properly and, and technically and operationally it is doing what we expect it to do. Um, that will open up the financing market to us from a debt side and not to take on more debt, but really to say, okay, who else is at the table and interested in coming the partner with us and refinance it? One of the things that we have on our side here is that we can pay off our senior debt um, without penalty. There's no prepay prepayment penalty clause. And that's really important in a situation that we could be entering next year, which is um, a road to strong cash flows, uh, a road to strong production, Papa Mono uh, coming online and ramping up. And with the right due diligence and the right uh, partner and getting their head around that due diligence, you know, we could come in with much lower financing costs and not be penalized on the way out the door. I want to follow up on the on the bot deal financing because I do have a couple sure. of questions. You, you went out with $10 million that was offered and you upsized yep. to 16. You said dilution was extremely painful. Why did you have to upside that financing? The because we because ten was sort of the visibility of all we could get at that time at a for a bot deal. Um, it, it was priced aggressively. I understand that, um, and the ten million bot portion was all the underwriters were willing to, you know, put their capital on the line. For those that aren't necessarily familiar with how it works, the underwriters put their capital to to uh, buy and fund the ten million, and then they they sell it and place it with their clients. Um, what we all didn't expect was the appetite for the product. Um, so it, it's, it's not that I wasn't looking for 16. It's just at the time, 10 was all that was offered. Yeah, but you, but you needed 16. So uh, yeah. let, let, let's talk about use of proceeds then. Like, what are you spending? You said you're moving sustaining capital forward. Um, you're a 24 million market cap company. You just raised $16 million. So EV theore theoretically should be eight, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, which is a bit mind blowing. But of course, you have your operational issues. So the market doesn't give you any trust because you race at 32 cents. You're trading at 21 and a half this yep. morning. Uh, yep. not, not ideal, right? And I'm not too too pleased about the share price performance, but I get it. Uh, like, I understand it. But uh, so uh, pin it down. Like, what are you spending the money on? Like, where's the $60 million going? How much are you going to end the year with? How much like... How, how far is that going to take you with Papa Mono as well and Don, Don Gabriel? Yeah, the, 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 the great thing about um, the money that we raised is that it's been, it's been you know, if you want to call it, I'll use a, a pun here, it's been quarantined from being used to repay any debt. Um, not sorry, not any debt, but any of the senior lenders debt. Uh, any of its uh, any of its principles, so that 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 is a, that is a good thing, and that is you know a condition of us closing the financing to give some uh, visibility for our shareholders that this isn't money coming in just to pay off debt. That's that wouldn't be healthy for the company at all. Uh, it is primarily for Papa Mono, uh, absolutely. Uh, as we have brought forward the sustaining capex, we're going to have a um, you know a continuing sustaining capex uh, requirements. Uh, after we finish initial construction uh, here in January, and so that is that is going to continue through. Uh, I, I mean, again, is if our if our modeling holds up, if uh, if this new phase of mining in Don Gabriel performs as expected, and we are able to get to definitive agreement with our lenders, again, it sounds like a lot of what ifs, but you know that's you know this is this is part about growing a mine and, and operating a single asset mine right now, and one source of ore. Um, you know, but I, I don't have the crystal ball, just like I didn't have the crystal ball at the beginning of 2021. There's, there's gonna, there's issues sometimes that work in your benefit and some that don't, yeah. um, you know, this, this capital arguably could be it. Um, and that's, and that's what we're, that, that's what our modeling shows. And that's what we're aiming for. Um, we're, we got the forbearance. We're going to, you know, work through some new repayment terms is, is our goal with the lenders over the next couple months, uh, probably into first couple of months, I hope to be in a position to announce that next year. And, you know, simultaneously, we're going to have those discussions with uh, strategic investors, um, possible anything that comes out of strategic review, because we don't want to be caught again with any surprises. Uh, and I think that would be the, in the best interests of all shareholders uh, is to have, um, to have the right capitalized balance sheet in the event something happens. Papa Mono, let's let's talk positives. We we caught up on the negatives and, and yeah, what's happened. Yeah. So, Papa Mono, you said uh, construction should be done in January. Give yeah. give us a bit of a like, how do you call it? Like preview of 
ramp up? Like, what is that going to look sure. like? I know cash flows are going to be difficult to discuss, but I just want to know when is the first cash coming in? It doesn't matter the amount, but uh, deliveries, payment schedules. I just want to get a handle because money seems always to be tight at TVC. So yep. just want to get a handle on when, when, when to expect some of it actually coming in. Yeah, no, this is um, uh, Papa Mono. Even Joe, sorry, COO says, "Hey, we might be able to cave before the end of end of the year, but I'm giving you January as kind of the guiding principle." And I and I appreciate that. So we, our intention, is to be drawing ore out of Papamono in January. Now it's not going to be a lot. It's going to be you know somewhere in the range of probably twenty thousand tons, fifteen or twenty thousand tons to start. And each month, each month that grows, and each month that grows. Where Papamona will really start to take off. Now realize if I'm using Don Gabriel's grade in, the, in, in our last quarter here, I think our grade was just above 0.5. Uh, so that it, it was, is, is not what we expected. But if we look at Papamona's average grade of 1.51, you know, for every ton of ore, we got three times the amount of copper. So, um, so that, that, that's the impact that Papamona is going to have as we move through 2022. Um, we will really start to see its impact in the back half of 2022, uh, and then come 2023, it's really we're going to hit we're going to hit plant capacity or at least cathode uh, capacity or uh, pretty close to it, uh, and and that's and that's going to be the cash flowing period starting in the back half of next year. Yeah, like one last follow up question to that because I've seen companies struggle with a GNA during the ramp up process. That is covered with a bot deal. Yes. Yeah, okay. you know, the, all, right. yeah so, all, all of this is that's when I see companies fail, like they calculate too tightly and just GNA during the ramp up sometimes seems to be forgotten because you got to pay people you... while you're trying to make money. So <laughs> that, that, that is true. Uh, our, our GNA actually at Topco, uh, to put it in perspective, there's four of us. Um, yeah. We run pretty slim. Um, so, and we, we all work from home, actually. That, uh, you know, that was a conscious decision not to go to an office again. Uh, when the opportunity arose. So, uh, you know, we are constantly in contact. We meet periodically, very infrequently, but, um, you know, the, the technology has allowed us to do that. So we, we try to keep that under, under wraps pretty tight. So, but, but uh, I'm just also, also on the operations level, just because it costs money to ramp up a mine, just uh, that, that part is covered. Because I've seen companies struggle with it in the past. Yeah. Right? Like what yeah. I've, seen, I've, I've said in a presentation before, it's like I'm doing the numbers. So that means like, well, you have a million dollars to cover like three, four months before you actually produce a positive cash flow. Like, and, and then the company, of course, struggles. You see another financing. It's just a death spiral that starts spinning, right? So, yeah, no, I don't like the possibility of it either. Uh, like th this is, a, a, I wake up every morning thinking about it and go to bed thinking about it. It, it doesn't. It doesn't end up for very good dreams or, or healthy sleeps, but uh, it's uh, we have we have visibility to a path. But I, I uh, surprises are going to happen, both positive and negative. Um, the the GNA isn't what worries me. Um, we got a we got a really good handle on costs. Uh, what has been the moving factor here? Actually, as I mentioned earlier, was Don Gabriel. Yeah. Um, pa Papa Mono is intended to uh, to dilute the effect of Don Gabriel, and, and come 2023, Don Gabriel will be paused. The operations will pause early in 2023, and will be ramp and will be operating solely from Papa Mono. Um, an important distinction, and this is where you know if people are thinking, you know, how do you know that Papa Mono will perform with the right ore grade, for example, and, and things like that? Th there's a there's a distinct difference between the two deposits. This takes me all of 30 seconds. Uh, through the probable and proven concept, uh, Don Gabriel was about 80 to 85% probable with 15 to 20% proven. Uh, proven has a higher confidence into, uh, uh, higher confidence um, associated with, with it uh, than probable. For Papamono, the density of drillings gives us the quite, quite the inverse. I think it's 83% is proven and 17% is probable. So the density of Papamonos and the confidence that we have with that deposit is much different than Don Gabriel. 
Fantastic. All right, Mike, Mike we've, we've chatted for 24 minutes now. Let, let, let's put a bow around it. Ne- All right. You sort of hinted at it, but next steps, next press releases, what can we expect? Uh, we're four weeks away from year end, obviously. So, uh, and, and in January, Papamono ramp up. But anything else in between that we can expect from the company to close that gap to the financing price again? Yeah, we're working. We're working. We got a little bit distracted. We're working on getting our U.S. listing on the OTC. So I do see that being something that we're able to announce before the end of this year. Um, I, I do uh, possibly see with this similar, and, I, and I'm not putting a rubber stamp on this, but uh, similar to what we've done in the last uh, couple fi- or the last couple press releases when we put money into MTV, we've actually been able to increase our ownership in the project. So um, we, we're in the process of getting the money down that we just got from the bot deal financing, a tranche of that uh, into MTV. And it, it's entirely possible that our ownership percentage may increase with that also. Um, so it's 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 a kind of a silver lining. Yes, there's dilution, but we are possibly gaining a, a larger ownership percentage of the project. Um, yeah, yeah, Mike, appreciate you coming on under review. I think we got a good update here, and uh, wish you good luck with Don Gabriel. Hoping the new phase sort of hits, hits the targets. So, so we don't have to have this conversation again. <laughs> yeah, agreed, agreed. Right, and uh, with Papa Mona, I'm looking forward to the ramp up. I'm looking forward to first. Uh, what was it called? Or stacking, or pulling out the first door. So yeah, or caving. It'll be or the first caving. Cave That's the word I was or, looking for. Yeah. So it might be my little uh, man flu brain that's a bit slow this morning. So <laughs> well, I hope you feel better uh, soon. It's. I've been fighting a sneeze. Though I'm surprised I haven't sneezed yet. I've been fighting it. But uh, Mike, I really wanted to get this conversation out. That's why, like everybody else, thanks for tuning in. Uh, Appreciate your patience. Well, they're not the best quality of interview in terms of audio production as well. So I do appreciate everybody's patience, but I wanted to get this conversation out before it gets too stale and old. We have been quite positive on Three Valley Copper. Then stock ran, stock crashed. And of course, we wanted to get some clarity on what has been going on. So Mike, yep. appreciate you coming on. And uh, everybody else, make sure to follow us on Twitter, follow us on YouTube, hit the like and subscribe button, of course, as well. And uh, we'll be back with more, hopefully from the studio this week. I don't know yet. Uh, it's 2021. I, don't, I can't go to the studio like this. So uh, appreciate it, everybody patience and uh, we'll be back very very soon thanks so much